something very different in this video. You're not going to get any skills tips. You're not going to get any fight tips. You're not going to get any boxing style analysis. Um, what you might do is get to know me a bit better. You might um, gain some inspiration from some of the stuff I'm going to talk to you about. And um, maybe you'll gain some insight into the lessons I've learned as a coach for almost 30 years working with young amateur boxers. My name's Fran Sands, welcome to My Boxing Coach. Before we get started, go download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Um, seven tools, um, 67 pages um, to help guide you on your boxing journey, be it for competition or for fitness. In there you get how to build the right mindset, setting up your own home gym, the 10 core skills that you need to master as a beginner, you get uh, insights into how to build power and speed into your punching, um, some guided training regime set up, how to lay out your training regime for the long term, building power and speed into your punches, shadow boxing, how to use the heavy bag properly. There's loads of stuff in there, you'll come back to it again and again. There is a link down below, there will be a link at the end of the video. Okay, um, so I wanna tell you a little story. Last weekend, I took, along with three other coaches, a team of boxers to a box cup. So this is a weekend of competition. Um, the, the competition takes place on the Saturday and the Sunday. And as I say, there were four coaches and we took a team of four boxers. Now, the interesting thing about this box cup is the Midlands Box Cup. It's designed specifically for novice boxers. So every entrant has to have five fights or fewer. They can't be any more than that. So these are what you would describe as novices. Um, now there's huge benefits from these young people going to this type of thing. You know, you get, um, they, they learn how to be around us coaches. We look after them for the whole weekend. No parents knocking about, uh, certainly not, not, not in our residence. Um, and it's quite a big investment for a boxing club like ours. You know, it cost us around about a thousand pounds to take these kids away. Um, so it's, it's not cheap but it is massively worth it for their development. And indeed for us as coaches, we, we gain a lot from it. Um, so quick talk through the timeline. On the Friday evening we gathered. Now, I was already tired because on the Thursday I'd driven to St Andrews and back from Liverpool to St Andrews in Scotland and back to pick up my son from university. That's a 10 hour round trip. So I was already uh, flagging a bit. Um, but I picked up a minibus, a 14-seater minibus. I did all the driving. We gathered the boxers together at the boxing club. Um, and then we went, so this is about tea time, about, about six o'clock. And then we went off to the shops. We bought some supplies for the weekend because we have to cook for them. We have to make sure they're fed and they're looked after properly. Um, and we also got a few beers because us, coach, us coaches need a little bit of downtime as well. Um, and then we set off. So it's from Liverpool to Birmingham this, this took place in a... Um, Hansworth, just near Hansworth Prison in Birmingham. So it took us about an hour and three quarters to get there. Got to the house, we booked like an Airbnb house. It was a townhouse, three storeys. Um, I we, we, we were all very well looked after. Each each pair of boxes had a twin room, so, so two boxes per room. Um, two of us coaches got our own room. Uh, one of our coaches is a female, Andrea, so Andrea got her own room. I got my own room because I was doing all the driving and Eddie and Jack, the other two coaches, were on like couch beds in, in, in the um, living room. Um, so we got there Friday night, really about just settling them in. So Saturday morning, the weigh-in for the first day of competition is between 8 and 10 in the morning. So we took our boxers to the venue, the Hadley Sports Stadium, um, and we weighed the boxers in. Perfect. So we, we got them weighed in, and then we went back to the house. Boxing wasn't starting until 12, and... If you cannot be hanging around in a venue, that's great, because it just gets a bit tiring. Um, so we went back to the house. I fed them, made them some tuna, uh, um, tuna mayonnaise pasta. They had some bananas, so fueled up. And two of them were boxing on the Saturday. Um, so two got by straight through to the final. On the Sunday, two, two had to box in, in a semi-final. Um, so we went down the venue. And the venue is great because what you actually have is three rings, ring A, B and C. Each ring has its own set of officials, its own referee. So they have, it's a complete setup. It was very smoothly run. It was really good. I've been to quite a few of these over the years. They can be a bit hit and miss, but when they're run well, it's, it's amazing. 
And the great thing is the young boxers, they get to be in that kind of competition environment where there's lots going on and they have to maintain focus. So both boxers um, competed on the Saturday, both won. Great performances, very, very proud of them. The quality of boxing, by the way, was unreal. I don't know whether it's because of COVID, but a lot of these boxers may have been in the gym four or five years, um, but the standard of boxing was unbelievably good. I mean, huge credit to all of the, um, the coaches. And I should add, it was wonderful for me as well. Um, I had a bunch of coaches come up to me um, Tony from Darleston, Sally Ann and Pete from Priory Park. Pete was a dead ringer for Rod Stewart. Um, Jimmy from Fleetwood. Simon from Telford. Simon actually has a YouTube channel called Fit to Box. I'll put a link up here. If you're interested in understanding about boxing gear and equipment, well worth a visit if you're looking to invest money. He does some really good stuff. But these, these coaches were coming up to me and just patting me on the back and shaking my hand for the stuff I do on YouTube. Now, that for me... That's out amazing. So the stuff I'm doing, I know is helping coaches, giving them ideas for them to use. And what greater, what greater commendation can I get to know that these people, these are proper boxing people, they're happy to use this stuff with their boxers. So that's a huge amount of trust. That's so yeah, that was just a little aside. It was wonderful. I felt it was really nice to have all of those guys coming up to me. So thank you. Uh, to, to you honestly it was it was brilliant so yeah both of our boxers competed on the Saturday both won and we were back home by two o'clock which was fantastic so that we can go and we can have a nap There's, the Euros was on the footballs on so we had some football to watch we could watch a bit of boxing just relax and then in the evening I, I cooked um, so I bought a load of stuff we had sweet potato wedges we had teriyaki salmon teriyaki chicken broccoli all of the and rice and all of the uh, the, the boxes at well and um, we still had to make ways we had to be careful um and then we went out for a nice walk after that then around around close to the house through a nice park um so that was nice relaxed saturday afternoon sunday then we had to check out the house we got down to the venue again between eight and ten is the way in um and obviously boxing didn't start till 12 so we got to the venue about nine weighed the boxes in all made their weight perfectly well we had four competing on the on the sunday so then we went off for a walk and it was a wonderfully sort of multicultural area that area of of birmingham um so lots of different types of sights and sounds and smells and we ended up in, a, in an albanian coffee shop i had a, an albanian tea i'd never drank albanian tea before so it was nice it's a different environment for the boxers they you know they it's, it's a different type of place. And then we took them for a nice big breakfast and got them back. And then, you know, it was an afternoon of competition then, and it was a busy day. Um, so four boxes, uh, I think we were on like second, fourth, eighth and 13th and there was, a, there was, there was an interval. Um, and it's a case of warming your boxer up. So I like to warm them up over sort of 30 to 45 minutes gradual warm-up mental preparation building the confidence getting them going and um they they performed amazingly you know given given how inexperienced they 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 are um and the thing you know i'll give you the focus on what matters is is a big lesson i have one of my boxers um he's just getting over a, a chest infection and he performed on the saturday one and he was brilliant he's just like a really classy southpaw this kid um, dead smart, very, very clever, knows how to use a southpaw style, southpaw style well. And on the on the Sunday, he was against well, against a really strong kid, put so much effort into rounds one and two, won the round. So I knew he was he was in charge, um, but he was absolutely wiped out back in the corner. And you know, this wasn't a case of trying to motivate the kid. The kid wants to win. This wasn't a case of giving him any technical advice. He knew what he needed to do. He was just exhausted. So for the whole minute, I don't even think I, I gave him a single instruction. I pulled his waistband out, pulled his low blow protector out so that he could breathe properly and just must have forced him to breathe about 10 or 12 big, deep inhalations in and out. Because when, you, when you're when exhausted, you're blowing, the, 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 you, you kind of want a shallow breathe. It's the worst thing you can do. You've got to get control. And then first three or four breaths are really hard because you feel like you're sort of choking, you feel like you're asphyxiating. But anyway, managed to, the whole minute in between the rounds, 
I focused on just getting his breathing sorted out and he went back out in pretty good shape. He got the fight, he won the fight, he was amazing. So yeah, big thing in my mind, um, focus on focus on what matters at any given moment. Um, so yeah, all four boxers fought. We had, we had two winners, we had two runners up, all acquitted themselves amazingly well. It was a long day, it was a long weekend. Um, things I took, look, three things. Uh, number one, uh, coaching is about giving. Um, it's, it's about, um, I'm not in it for, for what I get. My God, I've been doing it for 30 years. We don't get paid for it. None of the coaches there will, will be getting paid for what they do, and what we do. But you get so much by giving. So any situation I approach in life now, this is something I've learned in coaching. Um, I always try and approach a situation saying, what can I give, not what can I get? And I think it's a good way. And the gratitude of the boxers, when we got home, the messages we got off them, um, unsolicited. This is just young kids firing messages to us. It was amazing. So yeah, always approach a situation with what can I give, not what can I get. Um, young people, when people say kids these days, that's horse shit, don't listen to it. Kids these days, right, when given the right goals, when helped target the right goals, they will be as resilient and tough and they will, they will commit as hard as they possibly can, the same as any other kid from any other generation. Right, the resilience that these young people showed over the weekend and what I'm used to seeing week in, week out in the boxing club, it's unbelievable. So don't fall into that trap of thinking that young kids now are any different than they've been in the past. Their environment is a hell of a lot different. But when it gets down to brass tacks, these kids can go and will are as resilient as any, as any other kid from any other generation. Um, and secondly, always future focused. So we may... Jack, Andrea and Eddie, the four coaches who were there, we've got very clear views on what we're going to work on uh, early in the new season. We're on a rest now. I've got time off the boxing club. We, we need a rest. like 45, 46 weeks a year. We're in there three nights a week. Um, so, yeah, always be future focused. We've got very clear views now about what we're going to work on when we get back to the gym, the technical aspects of what we're going to work on. So we, we learned some really valuable lessons. I don't even know whether that was of any interest. If it was, I mean, you're still here. Thank you for, for, for listening. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you ever get the chance to be involved in a local boxing club where you can coach young people, grab that chance. It's, it's amazing. It, it, it genuinely is. It's, it's something quite special. Um, okay, I'm going to stop. Don't forget to download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. You'll really enjoy that, and it'll be something you do come back to again and again. Otherwise... Um, I'll uh, do a subscribe also, uh, don't forget, check out Simon's channel on, on, on equipment, um, there's a link down below, otherwise I'll see you in the next video, take care.